The flight controllers who first saw the signs of trouble on board Columbia on the morning of February 1st... FYI, I've just lost four separate uh, temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. ...spent several days before the orbiters returned to Earth engaged in a raging email exchange that seems to show a lot of alarm about possible damage to the shuttle. Specifically, whether pieces of foam that fell off the shuttle's external fuel tank 82 seconds after launch caused serious damage to Columbia's heat shielding tiles. On January 28th, landing gear expert Bob Doherty, based at NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia, who sparked the colloquy, asked a Houston-based colleague, any more activity day on the tile damage, or are people just relegated to crossing their fingers and hoping for the best? Three days later, January 31st, landing day eve, flight controller Jeff Kling offers his take on possible damage to the wheel well area and whether it might force the crew to bail out or ditch the spacecraft. If there was hot plasma sneaking into the wheel wells, he writes, we could see increases in our landing gear temperatures and likely our tire pressures. Ultimately, our recommendation in that case is going to be set up for a bailout, assuming the wing doesn't burn off before we can get the crew out. Kling held a teleconference with reporters hours after NASA released this batch of seemingly prophetic emails. He says the entire team had complete faith in the analysis done by Boeing engineers that concluded the foam did not inflict a fatal blow. There were mid-level managers in there. Uh, it did not go up to any upper level area because again it was a uh, it was more of an exercise within our group to to talk about these things and it's on entry day things are very busy uh, when we know that we have a good vehicle and and we're gonna go do a normal entry uh, we don't send these things around to, to cause distractions it just was within our group Kling says he and his team had no concerns about the health of the vehicle when he sat down at the console on February 1st but one engineer from shuttle contractor United Space Alliance weighs in with this. Why are we talking about this on the day before landing and not the day after launch? We asked the engineers why the what ifing wasn't shared with the upper management of the shuttle. They said, well, you have to be very clear cut and have concrete evidence before you do that. But interestingly, in the midst of all of this, the Air Force offered to aim one of its telescopes at the shuttle to see if it could spot any sort of damage. NASA waved him off this, that effort, so uh, partially because in the past they hadn't had much luck with that type of effort. So at the end of this day, what do we know in a sense? I mean, we know that these engineers had these concerns and that these concerns didn't get to the people at the top. Do we know if it would have made any difference? Well, that's the, that's the $64 million question. Who knows how many million? But the fact is, they still could not come up. If you look at those emails, they were trying to come up with a scenario that would make it safe for the shuttle to come back home if that were the case in this what ifing. They couldn't come up with one. So you're right. It gets back to that whole issue of a mood issue. Thank you. Latest now on the shuttle Columbia disaster. The head of NASA, Sean O'Keefe, was on Capitol Hill today where legislators put a lot of focus on emails that came to light yesterday. They showed there was a fierce debate among engineers, though not at the highest levels, on whether damage to the shuttle during liftoff could prove disastrous during re-entry. A lot of questions surrounding the debate. How was it handled? Who should have known about it? Could anything have been done to save the shuttle? We put some of those questions to Mr. O'Keefe ourselves earlier tonight. I want to talk broadly about where the investigation is in a minute, but I think people who uh, watched us last night, who read the morning papers today, are interested in these emails that um, were at least troubling, and uh, clearly uh, some of the engineers were troubled by them. Are you confident that the information flow that NASA had in place worked? Yes, sir. I mean, it, it is a clear uh, evidence that there was a very spirited discussion, as there is in every one of these scenarios, of trying to deal with what could happen, what might happen, working through all the what-ifs in order to determine what could be done if it was determined to be a safety of flight issue. And at the end of that whole dialogue, after several days of working that through, all the engineers at, and, and technical folks at the appropriate levels here made the, the uh, determination that based on the preponderance of evidence, this was not a safety of flight consideration. Do you know now, uh, in fact, how high up the chain of command those emails that we looked at went? Yes, it, it appears to have certainly been uh, 
dealt with as part of the Mission Operation Directorate uh, effort, which is exactly the, the level that typically uh, issues are always vetted and sorted out. Uh, there are certainly indications from all the, the traffic uh, that was raised at a variety of different levels throughout the shuttle uh, program as well, and at certain uh, uh, senior levels within the various centers of the NASA uh, family as well. So, you know, working through this, it appears as though there was lots of dialogue, lots of exchange. There were folks in varying levels of the organization who were communicating directly with each other. And again, that's the kind of dialogue and exchange that we see and want to encourage each and every time. So, just trying to sort uh, through a lot of stuff, and then I want to move on here if I can. Yes, sir. Um, you are confident that people who needed, who were capable of making decisions, or at least encouraging that decisions be made. Uh, it's a complicated uh, bureaucracy that, that is involved here, but that the information flow system worked. You are confident of that? It appears so, but again, you know, the, the examination that uh, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board is looking at here is not only what caused the accident, and we're hopeful that they come back with a definitive commentary on what they believe was the cause or probable cause of, of, the, of this terrible tragedy, but also they're looking at the systemic and the management kinds of issues. Were the judgments made at the right levels and so forth? And I'm going to be guided by their findings because they're far enough removed from this to be able to give us a, a solid, independent judgment at that point. You Based on the evidence we've seen, it looks like there was an exchange, spirited exchange, between <coughs> lots of levels and lots of uh, uh, technical uh, issues being going on that was not based on some hierarchical issue. It was all within varying levels throughout the organization, and that's heartening. But again, I, I need to be guided by that independent look. Let me try and uh, go two for one here if I can. Um, are you confident that uh, the board will come to a conclusion, that they'll understand what went wrong, and do you have any sense, is it possible to have any sense of when a shuttle will fly again? Well, it's, the, the confidence is, is generated by the commentary from Admiral Gaiman, the chairman of that board, as well as uh, his board members who have offered us how they think they're working through this in a very disciplined manner. They've narrowed it down to a, to a, a select number of, of issues after examining the fault tree analysis they've been engaged in, and the pace of the investigation is picking up. So it appears as though there is a, a likelihood, and they've offered their, their public statements in their press conferences, is that they feel like they're starting to narrow in on a number of areas. Having said that, uh, you know, it's, it's impossible to predict when mm -hmm. and how or what the findings will be, and certainly we'll learn that when they're concluded, and I don't want to rush that or encourage them to rush any judgment. In terms of how long will it take before we get back to flight, again, that's a real tough one because uh, if their recommendations, and uh, among these board members, they have over 50 accidents that they have investigated in the course of their respective professional careers, and they also know that uh, during the course of findings, what we really need to look at are the kinds of things that would inform decision-making about returning to operations. And they've committed to that publicly. They've said that in, in their press conferences that I've heard. And so as a consequence, we're looking forward to whatever guidance they can give us whenever they can give it to us. And we'll be positioned to make the recommendation uh, changes and uh, corrections, if uh, whatever they may be, in an effort to try to expeditiously get back to safe flight, but only if we can guarantee and satisfy ourselves that, in fact, that there's a way to get back to operational safe flight. The uh, tragedy touched all of us. It obviously acutely touched you and the people you work with. Uh, we appreciate uh, your time tonight. I know it's been a long day for you. Thank you. No, thank you, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be with you. Sean, I'm Keith, the NASA Administrator.